When I was filming the series Metal Evolution, I got the opportunity to talk to a lot of really talented metal musicians. And arguably, one of the most talented in recent years is Sam Totman, one of the guitarists for Dragon Force. And you know, sitting down with him at a London pub, I was kind of expecting him to be a serious scholar of music and a real academic when it comes to metal. But I got something completely different. So I present to you Mr. Sam Totman. Okay, here we go. Sam Totman, take one. When you guys first started, what was the music that you guys were excited to, to make? Honestly, for me, it was like, I went on tour with a, we had a black metal band years ago, and I went on tour with that, and, we'd, and the first time I heard any power metal was actually this guy from Nocturnal Rites, um, Frederick, and he, had, and, and he was playing this band Bewitched, and, like, and he said, I'll listen to my um, other band, and I was like, that's pretty cool. And then, and then, we were, then I heard some, heard Stravarius playing in one of those, at a gig like beforehand, before a show or something, it was over the PA, and I was like, man, that's the catchiest thing I've ever heard. Like, and I was like, what's that? It's like fast, but it's, because like I was always into thrash, and you know death metal and stuff, and, yeah. and I was like, this is fast, but it's super catchy as well. And I was wow. like, so when I basically when I got home, I was like, well, I want to make a band like that. I'd never heard this kind of music before, like, yeah. and I was, and it was this is like probably ninety seven or eight, I suppose. I went to my friends, a guy in Norway, um, it was a guy who runs a Italian magazine, John. I don't yeah. know if you know him, yeah. but yeah. like. And I went to stay at his house, and, and he had like the massivest record collection you've ever seen. And I was like, right, just tell me all the catchy power metal CDs, and I like copied them all. And so I got like Blind Guardian and Rhapsody. It was like I think the Rhapsody first album had just come out. And then, um, and so I went home with this massive sack of power metal. I was like, this is the best thing ever. Like, right, definitely making one of these kind of bands. <laughs> so what was it about uh, that style of metal that really drew you in? I think really just like the catchiness of choruses you know it's like really happy and uplifting and like but I was and it's also you, most of it's fast pointed all these power metal bands that I was listening to most of them would kind of have like two fast songs and then like a couple of mid-paced ones and that's kind of why our bands always had like seven fast songs and then like one ballad I was just kind of trying to take the best parts of what I liked about power metal and, and have only that you know like and that's why we kind of actually we had a t-shirt like when we first started it was like um and we wrote on the back we wrote we were kind of insulting all the european power metal bands we wrote this list of stuff and it said like lyrics crap pronunciation like two ballads per album like no two fast songs per album four crap ballads and like and we were, i don't know why we, we thought it was funny or something but like yeah and we were like it said like um guitar strapped up high under the chin and like pirate shirts and because like even though we liked the music a lot we still thought there was a lot of things that could be a lot cooler about it you know, so it was like, because they were always traditionally sort of wore, you know, lace-up pirate shirts and pretty nerdy kind of guys, and they were all pretty ugly, even if so weak. And I guess you guys kind of got classified as extreme power metal, or yeah. that, that was one term that was used as Yeah, power well, metal. actually, we made that ourselves. We kind of always thought, not to be big-headed, but we were always like, yeah, we're cool because we haven't got, like, three ballads, you know, every song's fast, and, like, and so we kind of wanted people to know that, and that was kind of a way of, like, you know, hopefully they would realise that it's, that it's not just another kind of European power metal band. Like we never actually said, let's go and do like, um, have like a you know, hundred solos on that thing. It was just like, I'd write a song, I thought, well, that's just what it should have. Cause it's like, it's, that's what I want to hear. You know, like mm. I always liked bands that did alternating solos. And so I was like, yeah, we're going to do that. And so it was all this, it's like even the small details like that. It was sort of all the, um, just everything that I'd ever listened to and liked chucked in together. What, what's the kind of experience that you want fans to have at your shows? What would you want someone that comes to a Dragon Force show and then leaves, what do you want them to have gone through? What is, I'd like them to come to a show and like, you know, just think, well, that was amazing. You know, it was really catchy. And like, you know, it was kind of made you feel good. We kind of got too, well, not too popular, because obviously we're not Bon Jovi or something anyway. But I mean, it's like, we kind of got too popular before, and we, we made these records, which are really glorious and great. And I, I, all I ever wanted, was people to go to the concert and hear this like the same thing like but louder you know and like because we were really young we didn't really know what we we couldn't really reproduce some of the things you know like you know with no one the people that no one really was good at seeing backing vocals this kind of stuff and you know when you've got this great big chorus on a record and like you've got like one singer that can sing well and then you've got a bunch of other idiots that can't really <laughs> sing it's like you know and every, now everyone's everyone's practiced and it's fine you know, i think yeah. i'd like to think we sound quite good these days do you, do you think about what like particularly when you mentioned like the sing along parts when you're putting the music together for dragon force are you thinking about well how is this going to translate 
into the live environment? What's this going to be like on stage? Actually, not at all. No, I honestly don't actually think that yeah. at all. Really, all I'm doing is writing a song that, that I want to sound good on a record. And then I, you kind of think about how you're going to do it live afterwards. Mm -hmm. I never actually think, oh, this part will be good live and I'm going to write a bit that goes dun 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 because everyone's going to jump up and down. Like, mm. I never actually thought that. You can't really mosh to our music because it's like not really moshing music. Like, and people don't. And then like, you'll see a band, I don't know, something like a, one that's a slower band. And it's like some bands just typical good for moshing. I was kind of in the beginning, we do festivals and I'd like, well, people don't really like us because no one's really moshing it up. And like, but then you kind of realize, well, it's just depend. I mean, I could sit there and write a bit that might work live, some kind of slow riff or whatever you're supposed to do to make people mosh it up. But like, um, I never really like, but well, I don't think they sound good. You know, like I just want to hear a fast drum beat. You know? Thinking about, not so much about Dragon Force, but about these European power metal bands. Mm. Why is it that they are so popular in Europe? and are not able to break through as much outside well, of Well, honestly, it. like, without being mean, I think it's because they don't look very cool. <laughs> like, I mean, like, we've got a bunch of 15-year-old kids come to our show, right? Okay, now we're getting on a bit ourselves, so you can, you know. But, like, I mean, all of the stuff I grew up on, they'd all have, like, those lace-up leather trousers that didn't even, weren't even tight. You know, a frilly pirate shirt, and, like, they're all about 40 anyway, even then. Like, it's like... A 16 year old kid in America doesn't really want to relate to that, no matter how catchy it is, you know. Mm, like, mm. so I think in a way it's that, and, and yeah. maybe also because like 10 years ago the internet wasn't quite as what it is now, yeah. you know, when th th this kind of bands that I was listening to, you know, where they're putting out their best albums, sort of you know, like 98 and stuff. I mean, it was still internet, but like not quite as much. I, I don't know, it's, uh, yeah, they're just too uncool. <laughs> Do you have an opinion about Man of War? Um, the only opinion I've got is that I was there my favourite band for ages. I went and saw them like first time ever. It was like in some festival in Germany, and like I was bummed out because there's not really any backing vocals. And I was like, but you got these great big choruses like hail, hail, and kill, and then there's just one guy singing. It. It's like where's all the power? <laughs> like that was so I was kind of bummed out actually. <laughs> Which is like I said before, like with us, we're trying to I want to just bring across what you've got on the album to live, and it, and it. For, for me, when that, I saw them, it didn't bring it across. They kind of champion this so-called true metal thing, too. I mean, what do you make of that? That we're kind of like, Man of War are the champions of true metal. I mean, wh what, what, are they, what are they talking about, do you think? <laughs> Wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> well, I suppose, I mean, you can say, like, I don't know, it's got a dumb, really, because, like, you can say, well, true metal, what, because it doesn't do shouting, singing, maybe? I think that's probably what they're trying to say, that it's not like a roaring monster but like I mean I like roaring monster bands too so like you don't have to in a way it's kind of narrow minded saying oh true metal is the only real metal or something because like there's so many great styles that, and they're all completely different like I mean I love Cannibal Corpse as much as I love Hammerfall you know, it's completely different but like it's still good in its own way maybe they thought a lot of metal had become untrue and that's why they needed to do this yeah maybe but I don't know I mean this whole the whole time is like there's still so many things, like whatever. I remember people always used to go, yeah, yeah, in the 90s, like, no one did guitar solos. Like, that was kind of a thing people would always say. And like, it was like, even when that kind of music was popular, there were still zillions of bands that were doing that. So I think people kind of get these kind of things in their head that it's not really actually true. It's like, right. the old oh, metals died out those days and now it's coming back. Well, it's like people, they've been saying that for the last 20 years, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like just a thing to say. Is there anything I haven't asked about Dragon Force or Power Metal or any of this that you want to add? Um, anything you feel I've left out that's important to say? Let's have a think. Um, mm, Especially mm. anything about Power Metal, this, this yeah. subgenre of no, Power Metal. No, because I'm sure I will think of something that I'd like people to know, because I don't do that many interviews, because <laughs> I'm usually too drunk and I'm not allowed. <laughs> <laughs>